topic like wholehearted risk and knowing that there are those in our community who have taken massive risk just to get here, and by here I mean the United States and um, certainly Utah, I want to start by first sharing a little bit about Cedronio Sembrano, my grandfather. His family came from Mexico, and in just the second grade, living in El Paso, Texas, he dropped out of school, went to work full-time in a brick factory, turning bricks for 50 cents a day. So to those people taking that type of risk, I first just want to tip my hat to you. Um, in our, thank you. <laughs> in our career, the risk we take can be no less daunting or real in our own sphere. Whether it's something that we're pursuing at the company that we're currently employed or something entrepreneurial, risk can make us shake in our boots. I'd like to share with you some of the risk that I've taken and the framework I'd like to use is of my last startup. I'll share three points and talk about three phases of that startup, take you through a little truncated journey of when we were just getting going, as we were kind of experiencing growth and after we got acquired. First, wholehearted risk requires problems that are worth putting your whole heart into. About a decade ago, my co-founders and I were some young pups in Provo, Utah, felt like we were on top of the world, had a little bit of cash, we had a little bit of technical wherewithal, and we were pursuing a problem that for us seemed huge. As the sons of first-generation college students, we could appreciate the fact that going to college, whether that's searching, applying, or getting admitted to college, is a big deal. And it can be cause for a lot of concern on the part of young people and their parents. We, like I said, felt like we were on top of the mountain, overlooking things, felt all the bit young stars. Um, what was less apparent was that about three months before this picture was taken was my personal life came to a screeching halt. My 23-year-old kid brother passed away, and all of a sudden, the enormity and excitement of the startup, the, the size of the problem we were solving just fell by the wayside. It was as if, how could I give my whole heart to something when I felt like I had a real gaping hole in my heart? It was at that time when I experienced real startup horsepower from my co-founder, Brad Hagen, who you see pictured here. I remember being in the living room of Ryan Caldwell. He was a team member at the time. He's currently the CEO of MX, if you've heard of that company not far from here. We're sitting on his couch, and I look to the guys, and I go, I'm out. I just don't have the will or interest at this point in pursuing this, right? There's other, th other things on my heart and mind. And um, it was then that Brad turned to me and he said, hey, man, take what time you need. We'll still be here. We'll still have your spot. And had things gone differently then, I would not have experienced this success ultimately in the wholehearted risk I took at that time. Two. Oh, sorry. So the point there is that certainly put your whole heart into big, hairy problems. Um, but understand that it may be the people that you put your whole heart into that are equally important. Second point, wholehearted risks by, comes and, and, and requires that you take risks in others. Our business began to grow. We found that the growth meant that domestically things were going well, there was an opportunity for something international, and that the needs of the business started to outstrip the abilities of us as founders. Fortunately, we had a strong cast of advisors. This is Anne. Sweet, thoughtful, kind, and as tough as nails, Ann Duane. Ann was one of our advisors and agreed to come on as CEO a couple years into our business. We were extremely confident in her abilities as a leader, um, but for entrepreneurs who had our early crew, we were close friends, it felt like massive risk. We were entrusting our baby and our startup to Ann. The equation looks something like this. With a little more detail, you'll find just how differently this appears. You see, Anne's career was in the Bay Area. She had come off, off a successful exit of her last business, was a senior VP for the acquiring company, Monster.com, and she had no shortage of opportunities in front of her in the Bay Area. Before her time there, she was on the East Coast at Harvard Business School in Georgetown before that, so her career had effectively taken her from excitement on the East Coast to all the heart of tech on the West Coast, and now she was coming to Utah, which I'm not a downer on Utah, but 10 years ago, we weren't as cool. And not just, anywhere in, not just anywhere in Utah, she moved to Provo, Utah. And not just anywhere in Provo, Utah, I remember walking with her and we found an apartment. This is a single woman. We found a perfect place not far from our office, right in married housing at BYU. <laughs> you can understand quickly that the risk being taken was very different. So 
Wholehearted risk requires that you take risks on others, and oftentimes that those people are taking big risks on you. Final story, final point. We made it. We, we saw that business through, and we successfully, because of Anne and an amazing team, which at the time we had offices in San Francisco, Provo, and Beijing, we sold the company in 2011. And it was life-changing for us as founders. It was great for all shareholders, investors, awesome. I was business leader for the acquiring company over international, which meant that I started what we were doing in China, and we started to look at the rest of the world. I remember putting together this PowerPoint presentation over the phone, presenting it to our CEO. Last slide, a request of a series of asks. The last one was Dan's blessing. Dan was the CEO. Dan stops me and says, Sid, how do Mormons give a blessing? And I'm kind of like, huh? And he says, well, I'm a, I'm a Jew from New York. I hear you're a religious guy. You're a Mormon from Utah. How do you give a blessing? I'm really nervous, and I start to describe how someone in my faith might give a blessing to another person. He listens. He says, okay, hold on. And I hear this shuffling in the background. And then he says, Sid, look at your phone. And I see this photo. And he says, Sid, I just gave you a Mormon blessing on your plan. Go for it. <laughs> I loved how, what, what that did for me, right? It immediately relaxed the atmosphere. It was complete appreciation for differences. And he didn't understand, and he doesn't know much about Mormons. But um, it endeared me to Dan. For all the rest of the time I was with Chegg, and to this day, I can text him when I'm in New York, where he's from, and say, hey, Dan, I'm going to Hamilton. You want to come? And he'll be like, sorry, I'm going to Bruce Springsteen, my 75th like, you know, time watching Bruce. They're friends. And um, he responds to me. He mentors me. He helps me with the things as a young venture capitalist that, that are on my mind. My message is super simple. It's, I hope you have huge problems to put your entire heart into. Understand that when you do that, and should it bring you to your knees, you are not alone. There are other people who will be similarly putting their heart into it with you. And this was the graphic that was supposed to be there for you. Um, so, <laughs> good luck and take courage.